evening. I am Linda Pye, the clerk to today's district planning committee meeting. And on behalf of the chairman, I would like to welcome you all. The meeting will be chaired by Councillor Fly Hooker and Councillor Alan Law is the vice chairman. The other members of the committee are uh, Councillors Phil Barnett, Dennis Bennyworth, Hilary Cole, Carolyn Colbert, Royce Lompton, Ross McKinnon, Alan Macro, Andrew Moore, and Graham Pass. The following officers are in attendance to advise the meeting. Paul Goddard, um, Principal Development Control Engineer, Bob Dre, Team Leader Development Control, Michael Butler, Principal Planning Officer, Shiraz Sheikh, Legal Services Manager, Carolyn Richardson, Emergency Planning Manager, and Linda Pye, Principal Policy Officer. I am assisted tonight by Kevin Griffin, who will be the Zoom host of the meeting and will be assisting the chairman as I'm about to describe. I will now give some reminders to members and other attendees about the way we conduct the meet council meetings via Zoom. The meeting is being webcast and recorded. Please can I ask members to make a note of your meeting ID, which can be found in the top left hand side of the screen, marked with the information symbol. This will be of assistance if you experience any technical difficulties and need to join the meeting by telephone only. Please ensure that you have clicked participants at the bottom of the screen so that you can see a list of the attendees on the right side of your screen. All of you, except the chairman and myself, are currently muted. Please remember to unmute yourself when you are asked to speak by the chairman and then re-mute yourself when you finish speaking. The host may unmute you if you forget to do so. I would advise any members to unmute themselves if they start to speak and have forgotten to do so. If anyone wishes to speak, please use the raise hand key at the bottom of the participants list. This will give an indication against your name on the participants list. I will then notify the chairman that you wish to speak if the chairman has not noticed that you're waving your hand. The chairman will then invite you to speak in the order he deems most appropriate. Once you are speaking, please lower your hand. The host may cancel your raised hand indication if you forget to do so. If you have telephoned in, you won't be able to sit to signals. So once everyone who has raised a Zoom hand has spoken, I will ask the chairman to invite anyone who has telephoned in to speak in order. Any voting necessary will take place by a named vote on each item. Members will be asked in turn by the legal advisor how they wish to vote by stating that they are for or against the proposal or if they wish to abstain. Please remember to unmute yourself when voting. Unless the committee asks for the vote to be recorded, the outcome of the named vote will not appear in the minutes. So anyone wishing the vote to be recorded must indicate this before the vote is taken. If we need to adjourn the meeting at any point, the chairman will adjourn and will advise the committee of the revised time and date of the meeting. If it is a short adjournment, you will be able to rejoin your Zoom meeting, otherwise a fresh appointment will be sent out. Do members have any questions about the way in which the meeting will be conducted? No, thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Pye. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I am uh, Councillor Clive Hooker and I'm chairman of this committee. And uh, welcome to those members of the public who are watching the streaming of this meeting online. online. Um, members, before we start, start the meeting, uh, may I remind you that uh, this meeting is being streamed live to the general public. And although we appear to be sat comfortably here in our own homes, our uh, members' code of conduct rules uh, still apply. With that done, I will move on to the first item of the agenda, apologies. Mrs Pye, do we have any apologies, please? Uh, yes, Chairman, we've had apologies from Councillor Tony Vickers and Councillor Andy Moore is substituting. <coughs> Thank you. Item two on the agenda, uh, we have two sets of minutes to approve this evening and uh, they are for the district planning meetings that were held on the 4th of March and the 14th of May this year. Uh, firstly, those members who attended the planning meetings on the 4th of March uh, do you accept them as a true and accurate account of that meeting or do any of you have, a, have any observations? Uh, if you do, would you please raise your hand? 
no observations. Uh, may I have a proposer, please? I'm happy, happy to propose both sets of minutes, Chairman. Thank you. I didn't pick up who that was. A clever name, please. Uh, Pask, Chairman. Thank you. And do I have a seconder, please? I'm very, I'm very happy to second them, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Law. Uh, for this um, vote, I'm happy to do a show of hands. So all members in favour, please raise your hands. Thank you. Abstain. I think, Councillor Barnett, from my record, you weren't at, weren't at that meeting or, and, or Councillor Moore. So I think you'll have to abstain from voting on these meetings. If you look which at is, the meeting... Which is why I'm abstaining, yeah. Thank you. We now move on oh, to those... Um, Chair, Chairman, sorry. Oh, sorry, yeah. can I just, just return to the the reason I voted for, I was at one and you were doing it combined. If you'd no. done it separately, I would have done it as abstained on the 4th of March because I wasn't present. Okay, this, is, this was for the 4th of March, members. So we could do that again. Vote of hands for the 4th of March. Against... Abstain, two abstentions, three abstentions, thank you. Um, a proposer I've got as uh, Councillor Law and a second of Councillor Pask. Uh, therefore, those minutes are approved and I will sign them. Uh, secondly, uh, those members who attended the meeting of the 14th of May, uh, do you accept them as a true and accurate account of that meeting or do you have any observations? If you do, please raise your hand. No observations of those um, on those minutes. Uh, do I have a proposer, please? I propose, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Cole. A seconder, please. Uh, yeah. I'm happy to second. Thank you, Councillor Law. Again, um, all those in favour, a show of hands, please. Against. Abstention. Those minutes are agreed and I will sign those. Mrs. Pye, Mrs. Mrs. Pye, I'll just show you the minutes are signed. Thank you. Uh, we now move on to item three of the agenda, declarations of interest. Um, maybe I could kick this off first, a general, so we're not all uh, coming in with the same maybe uh, observation. I think all members have been lobbied by email uh, by the numerous res residents of Tadley and Aldermaston area. Um, I will state here somewhat unconventionally, uh, as uh, these emails were sent direct to the members as opposed via the Plan Apps portal. Um, I have also been lobbied by councillors of Basingstoke and Dean Council. Uh, does anyone else have any observations on being lobbied? All quite happy. Thank you very much. Can that be recorded, please? Item four of the agenda, we now come to the planning application this evening, and we have one application. Uh, this is application number 19, zero, uh, 19 stroke 01063. This is for the land uh, of the south of Raven's Wing Farm at Tadley. And this is for the erection of a class A1 food store with associated car parking access landscaping. And this is for Little UK Limited. Um, for the benefit of those public watching, I will just very quickly uh, go through the um, um, how the uh, determination of this application will be dealt with tonight at this meeting. Um, the officers uh, will, will present the application to the committee, the drawings, site plans and any deemed relevant material submitted on the planning file will be shown on the screen as part of that presentation. I will then ask the clerk, Mrs. Uh, Pye, uh, to read out the 500 word submissions that West Barks Council have received regarding this application. These will be shown on the screen for additional clarity and they will be given from the following groups and in this order. I will ask firstly for the representation of the parish councils, then any objectors, any supporters, and then the applicant. After that, I will invite the ward member to speak and he will have five minutes to present his case. On completion, the members of the committee may then ask him questions of clarification on his presentation. The committee members will then have the opportunity to ask questions of clarification 
from the three officers who are making the presentations this evening. Members, I'll remind you now that your questions to the member and to the officers uh, should only be for clar clarification on their presentation. The committee will then debate, debate the application and then vote on the decision uh, that will be made. So the application this, uh, this evening is for uh, this uh, erection of a food store at uh, Raven Swing Farm in Tadley. And uh, this has come to the committee following the Eastern Area Planning uh, resolve that the application be approved, whilst the application is contrary to the statutory development of the plan and is of a high public interest. Apologies, Chairman. Can I um, just ask a question? Of course you can. Um, yeah, it's just that we moved on from declarations of interest a bit, um, a bit quicker than I, than I expected. Okay. Um, I, I just wanted to declare an interest, if I, if I may, uh, yes. Mr Chairman. I was on the Eastern Area Planning Committee uh, in December, which heard this application uh, before it was referred to, to District Planning Committee. Um, I intend to listen to tonight's proceedings, however, with an open mind, and my vote will not be dependent on my previous vote in December. Thank you. Uh, just before uh, Councillor Longton, uh, anyone else on that committee would like to make that declaration? Councillor Law and Councillor Macro and Councillor Longton. Is that your point, Councillor Longton? No, I have another point in relation to declarations of interest. I think it's relevant that we've all, I think, been contacted by representatives from Middle. Thank you. That will be recorded as well. Thank you very much. All happy with the declarations and we're all happy how the format of the meeting is going to take place this yes. evening. Chairman, I'm very happy to, uh, I would have said the exact same words that Councillor McKinnon said. Thank you. That would be recorded, Mrs. Pye. Uh, we now move on to the presentation of the application, and uh, I'll ask Mr. Butler to uh, present this to us, please. Mr. Butler. Yeah. Can you hear me, Chairman? I can hear you, yes, thank you. And um, we've got up your side. The application site is. Um, as these screens will show through these slides, uh, right up against the Hampshire County boundary with Aldermaston Parish. And it lies immediately south of the AWE site within what is called the inner safeguarding area, where, as I'm sure you will be aware, having read the report, policy CSH refers. As the chairman has said, the site is for a discount food store and it's a full application. Uh, the reason it comes to this committee is because it comprises a formal departure from your development plan. The applicant is Lidl, as you all know, but please be aware, as the my report says, that if the council elects to approve this application, any permission will not be personal to that company that's any other discount food store operator. The site lies immediately to the east of the A340, and there will be one principal access onto that road. However, via amended plans 60, uh, the committee considered this in December last year, the applicants have introduced an emergency access onto the Silchester Road to the south as the plans show. I stress this is just for emergency in case of an incident with the AWE and it will not be for general use, although <coughs> there will be a possibility, I believe, of uh, future pedestrian access, possibly, but it will not be for normal vehicle access. The site is, as I'm sure you've seen from the photographs and the presentation, is clearly Greenfield and it lies 150 metres distance from the closest defined settlement boundary in the West Berkshire plan, which is Falcon Fields to the north of the application site. However, just for clarity, it lies immediately adjacent to the settlement boundary of Tadley across the road, which of course lies within Hampshire's basic Seconds area. The application is just over 2,000 square metres gross floor space of A1 retail space. It will be single storey and approximately 
7.2 meters in height with a mono pitch roof with brick glazing, sorry, brick facing glazing and solar panel roofs. Roof. It will have 129 parking spaces, some for disabled and some for families. And in addition, and this is an important thing for perhaps the Eastern area members to note, since the December meeting, a new landscape buffer strip has been introduced around the northern and eastern perimeters within the site um, control of the applicant. And therefore, again, if the application is approved tonight, if uh, that additional landscape and screening will form part of the application by condition. As the chairman has correctly alluded to, the application comes before committee given the very significant public interest. And last year, the development control manager in the first instance advised that the application should be taken to the APC, who subsequently resolved to approve the application because of its departure from your local plan. Uh, and it would also impact upon future decisions made by the sorry, council on similar applications in the future it was accordingly referred up to this parent committee. The principal material planning considerations which the committee need to consider in your determination of this application will be as set out in the agenda report, but I'll summarise them here. The principle of the scheme in policy terms, any visual impact arising, any retail issues arising, highways issues, and nuclear safety. On the first point, officers consider that the principle of the new build on the Greenfield site is not accepted, uh, since there is no exceptional justification in your officer's view to overrule this policy restriction on the protection of open countryside. On the second point, which is also forms one of the reasons for refusal on the agenda sheet, this relates to visual impact. The scheme will comprise a relatively large building in the local context. Uh, it will have a lot of external lighting. There will be disruption of existing vegetation. And there will be an introduction of considerable commercial activity throughout the year over the trading hours. That in itself we consider uh, will have a detrimental impact on the local environment. And so contrary to policies CS18 and CS19 in the local plan. In terms of retail impact, however, your officers have accepted that whilst there will indeed be a significant retail impact on Sainsbury's to the south of this development, uh, that as a whole will not affect the vitality and viability of Tadley. And indeed it will and a valuable adjunct in retail terms to that uh, centre as the lessons of support have shown. I'm happy to answer questions on this, but it's also accepted that the application clearly satisfies the sequential and impact tests in addition. In terms of highways, and I'm sure my colleague Mr Goddard will speak further on this, we have also accepted as officers that whilst inevitably there will be some impact on the A340 to the west of the site, that impact will not be severe. And so taking into account the advice of the MPPF, the application should not be refused on that basis. Finally, uh, I'm not going to say the most important issue, but uh, possibly one of the most contentious issues has been the nuclear safety issue, which was discussed at some uh, length following the EAPC committee and I can confirm that officers have resolved, sorry, the applicant has now satisfied the officers in relation to uh, the capability of an emergency lockdown plan being approved by a condition, and that would be a precondition, if the application is approved tonight. Hence, just for clarity, Unlike in the EAPC meeting, 
the lack of a suitable lockdown plan is not part of any reason for refusal in this agenda reports. So in conclusion, Chairman, as you'll obviously know, the officer recommendation is to refuse, but that recommendation is on balance, given the substantial benefits which will arise from the application, which very briefly, and I'm sure you're aware, increase retail competition, uh, discount food prices, <coughs> reduction in traffic flows to outside the catchment and tapping to surrounding towns to other discount food stores, so reducing CO2 and traffic, increased local employment, a valuable investment in the town centre, particularly now post um, COVID because of a possible economic downturn. And Tadley has been a growing town with much additional housing, so the population requires more food stores. However, we consider at officer level that the negative impacts of the increase in traffic the visual impact, the loss of the green for site being contrary to well-established policy, the increase in local noise and pollution and lighting plus general commercial activity means that we are accordingly recommending refusal. Before I finish, Chairman, I just want to highlight some points in the update sheet. I won't read this verbatim because that would prolong the presentation too long. But just to clarify, since the DPC report was printed, and that's only just over the last week, uh, we have received 95 further representations in support of the application, bringing the total to just under 1,000 in support of the proposal from the local area. In addition, a further 22 representations of objection have been received bringing the total number to 86. Just as a brief aside, it's extremely difficult in this uh, application to provide a completely accurate, precise figure as to the total number of representations, but a number have been received in various forms for the application, and the paragraph in the update sheet sets out the reasons why there may be some uh, calculated variations. Largely because, if I may say, the applicant, uh, which is their right to do so, has also undertaken a separate consultation exercise over and above, as it were, the own local authorities' statutory public consultation exercise. In addition, amongst the representations received, uh, Chairman, committee members, as you know, as you know, sorry, as you know, have also received uh, three emails from councillors from Basingstoke and Dean, which is the adjoining borough all in support of the application. And the reasons are set out in the update report. I don't propose to read those out because you will have seen those, but we did want to highlight support from the local Basing Sofa D, Borough Town Council and District Council members. And in, indeed, in addition, there is one from Councillor Vo of Town, Tadley Town Council, who also clearly supports this application and ask for it to be approved. The matters raised in support and objection in relation to the representations broadly align with what you have already seen. I don't propose to go through the bullet list in the support uh, list because again they're on the update sheet. There are no new particular ones over and above since the EAPC, although if I may highlight the COVID-19 crisis, which has intervened, has um, increased, as it were, the support from the local population for accessibility to cheap uh, and convenient food stores for uh, very obvious reasons. And in addition, many residents do not consider that the security issues arising from the AWE will be problematic given that there is considerable housing adjacent to the application site in any event. The objections are also listed, and again, there are no particularly new objection issues which you should be aware of, uh, similar to before, although a number do highlight particularly increased noise and pollution from traffic, 
uh, which may be harmful to children with asthma. Those are one or two new issues which have been raised. Um, and that's it, Chairman. So I conclude that the recommendation is to refuse the application. I'm just going to, uh, Mr. Dre is just going to go through the photos of the application site. Uh, just so you're aware in case you weren't able to um, do the site visit, uh, on a company site visit. So this is um, CGI from the applicant uh, showing how the store would look from the southwest of the application site. This is an aerial CGI of how the application would look, um, if you like, from an axonometric view. That is the westerly street level with the enhanced landscape buffer. I do stress this is how a landscape buffer would look in probably 15 years' time and not straight away. That is from, again, from the westerly street level uh, across the open field showing the landscape buffer and the vine still finishes. And this is simply to, uh, that's such a not quite <laughs> Can you go back to the other one? Put it on. I just want to show you this particular um, application slide because the red area is the application site. To the north lies the defined settlement boundary of Falcon Fields, which is about 150 metres away from the application site. But clearly members will see that the defined settlement boundary of Tadley, the built-up area, lies immediately adjacent uh, to both the west and the south of the application site. But of course that lies within a district, different district council boundary. And finally that's looking from Silchester Road into the site if the application is approved, this is the location of the new emergency access. And again, this is the road junction to the southwest of the site as it is at present. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Butler, for your uh, detailed presentation. Um, members, I'll now ask um, Mr. Goddard to give us uh, his observations on the highway matters uh, uh, relating to this uh, application at uh, Tavern. Mr. Mr. Goddard, thank you. Good evening, Chairman. Thank you. Um, the relevant section, the highways and traffic section of the report, is found uh, from paragraph 6.20. Um, of the main reports before you. Um, it's quite important to talk about county boundaries. Um, the site is adjacent to the, the boundary between us um, in West Berkshire and Hampshire. The A340 front in the site is under the jurisdiction of West Berkshire Council, but Silchester Road uh, on the other side is under the jurisdiction of Hampshire County Council. So I have been liaising quite closely with my counterparts from Hampshire uh, in assessing this proposal. So to begin with the, the site itself, um, we are content with the main site access onto the A340 uh, with regards to its width and sight lines, it all complies to uh, standards. Um, there was a, a traffic model done under a Junction 9 uh, software on this junction, and it was suggested that it didn't require a turn right lane. However, um, your officers here at West Berkshire and at Hampshire considered that a, a junction with a turn right lane uh, would be beneficial, particularly with its close proximity to the A340 Silchester Road Junction uh, immediately to the south. There is also um, an emergency access provided onto the Silchester Road, uh, which is uh, under Hampshire jurisdiction, and officers from Hampshire County Council are content with this access. The layout of the site is acceptable to us, 
but there are some concerns regarding parking levels. It doesn't comply, quite comply, to the council's parking standards. Um, the standards are that one space per 14 square metres is provided. But what we have got is 129 spaces, which equates to one space per 17 uh, square metres. So we are a bit concerned about that. These stores can be quite popular and I don't expect this to be much different here in Tadley. But the applicants did provide us with some data on how parking accumulates with other little stores in, in the south of the UK. And we also looked at the, the recently approved little store in, in Calcutt that was approved about four years ago. So from the data contained with all those uh, submissions, on balance, it's probably acceptable parking wise. It's certainly not enough, uh, we feel, uh, that we could object on parking grounds. Paragraph 6.22 um, details some traffic generation figures that have worked out from a database uh, national uh, uh, database, trip rate information computer system. And first impressions would suggest, well, those figures are quite substantial. <laughs> but you need to look at the, 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 the paragraph below, which talks about pass-by trips. Because a lot of those, those figures there in the table, that might tell you how much traffic is going in and out of the site. But a lot of the traffic that's already on the A340 front in the site is already there. It's already passing by. And then I think, as Mr. Butler mentioned earlier, there are some parts of the network where traffic could reduce because the traffic no longer has to go to an alternative source uh, to visit a, a supermarket. It can now come here. So in that paragraph, 6.23, when we take out the pass-by trip figures out, during a weekday PM peak, we're looking at a, a, an increase in traffic on the A340 front in the site of an additional 37 vehicle movements, of which the majority comes from the south. Um, that is where most of Tadley is. So your officers have no concerns regarding the impact of this development on the Falcon directory, gyratory to the north. There is concern regarding the junctions to the south, the A340 Silchester Road and the A340 Sainsbury Junction. They've also been modelled um, using Linzig software and those traffic models were checked by officers at Hampshire County Council who found the models to be acceptable. There is a concern during the weekday PM peak that an existing traffic queue from the A340 uh, Sainsbury Junction that tells towards us, towards this site, um, is already an issue during PM peaks. And this development will add to it. But it's not considered the additional length of queue is enough for us to object. Um, currently, on average, you would have a queue of about 21 cars, and this proposal was projected to increase it to 24. So, yes, an increase, but we consider it marginal. Unfortunately, Hampshire have no plans, or it's not possible to improve the junction to the south. There's no additional highway land to make it bigger or anything like that. So, if the proposal is approved tonight, Members will have to approve it uh, in that knowledge. So, concluding um, comments, paragraph 6.25. While there are some concerns uh, from highway officers regarding car parking levels and the traffic impact on the A340 southbound, it is considered that the concerns are not sufficient to raise objection. This is having regard to the advice of these matters in the National Planning Policy Framework, which states that planning applications should only be refused if the impact on the local network is severe. Um, or we would conclude that the impact is not severe and therefore highway officers from West Berkshire and Hampshire raise no objection to this proposal. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Gorard. 
Right. Um, in Mr. Butler's presentation, he mentioned the uh, position of the uh, emergency plans with regard to AWE. And I'd, I'd now like to ask Mrs. Richardson just to give us an update where we are with those uh, emergency plans appertaining to this application. Mrs. Richardson. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just to give a bit of flavour backwards, if you like, um, this has been a, a very challenging um, application to actually deal with. Um, what we, what um, as emergency planning officers that we're looking at um, and working with is um, the Radiation Emergency Preparedness and Public Information Regulations, quite a mouthful, with REPIR for short. Um, and effectively what we are doing is um, we have a duty to ensure compliance um, with um, uh, and making sure that the emergency, the AWE offsite emergency plan that the council is responsible for um, mm -hmm. can actually be affected and to make sure that the public health um, is protected. That's the, the main aim that we're actually trying to achieve here. Um, when we've been, um, this is all obviously to do with uh, the AWE Aldermaston site, which is a nuclear license site, um, which is only approximately 400 metres from this actual application. Um, they, I should also say that each application that we get forward, we look at on its own merits, um, regardless of um, where um, the, the um, applications are. Um, I, I hear the terms also about inner zones, uh, which is a planning application term. Um, I look at it from a detailed emergency planning zone. Um, it, in, in effect, it's just almost the same thing, um, but certainly it's uh, we're looking at it from a detailed emergency plan zone where we need to make a detailed emergency plan um, for the area. What we look at when we're looking at these applications is what the impact might be on um, the offset plan and potentially on the applicants that the, the application being put forward. The, prior, the proximity to AWE in this case has made it an extremely challenging application to consider. Um, key for this, however, is applicants can actually put forward a mitigating um, of, um, plan, if you like, to uh, try and mitigate some of the risks that we've identified um, with the application. In this case, um, because it's a commercial unit rather than a residential, there is that opportunity. Um, and in that respect, an emergency plan has been um, put forward by the applicant. Um, there have been several iterations of that application um, with that uh, emergency plan. Um, it's been quite challenging to go through because it, it's not just me, I hasten to add, and this council that has to look at it, but all those um, who form the AWE offsite planning group, which involve um, all the emergency services, other councils, health. <coughs> so it's a number of agencies that actually need to, um, to be consulted and be satisfied that the um, emergency plan put forward is going to be fit for purpose. Since the, the last meeting in December, um, there has been progress with that emergency plan. Um, there is still some work to be done on it, it's fair to say, but it is believed that um, the, the end is near and that the applicant should be able to um, provide us with a satisfactory um, emergency plan to um, mitigate the um, implications of their site where it is against the AWE site and the very unlikely um, opportunity that uh, something a radiation emergency takes place at AWE Older Maston. Uh, there is that risk and that's why we, we look for an emergency plan. Um, we are not looking for bunkers or anything like that. We are looking for a safe system of work to make sure that the, the people that are and the, the, the staff and the uh, members of the public who are in the store are in close proximity and go inside, stay inside, and be looked after for a period of time um, until such time it is safe to come outside and be moved on, on evacuated elsewhere, which could actually be several hours. And I say several hours, it's 24 to 48 hours, potentially, depending on the incident. Um, so at the moment, at this moment in time, um, subject to the applicant coming forward with an updated and acceptable plan, then we would be removing our objection to the, the, um, the refusal we put forward initially. Thank you, Mr. Drusia Members, as I pointed out in the introduction, uh, we now come to the part of the uh, meeting where we get the representations from the various interested parties. And uh, the first one I was hoping to get some uh, response from is the uh, parish council. Um, I've been informed that uh, there's no representation from Aldermaston Parish Council. 
uh, equally disappointing, there is no uh, uh, response at all from the adjoining parish, uh, is the parishes or councils, those of Tadley, Silchester, Hallhurst, or um, Basingstoke and Dean Council. But uh, the second uh, interested party to give a presentation are our objectors. And uh, I will ask Mrs. Pye to read out the submission from Sue Smith. Mrs. Pye. This is the written submission from Sue Brown, objector. I am not against this stall being built in Tadley. However, I do have grave concerns about the traffic. <clears throat> the road is not wide enough to have a dedicated right turn off the A340. There has been a recent accident opposite where the entrance to the stall will be, with the air ambulance having to attend. If traffic has to queue, this will impact at the traffic lights on the junction of Franklin Avenue. Road and the A340. Any queue on the left hand side of the road would impact on traffic and the lights at the Falcon Triangle, again causing chaos. Obviously, obviously, this would all then affect the smaller roads in Tadley. Either queues would make it extremely difficult for emergency ambulances to get to the doctor's surgery in Franklin Avenue or for the fire service to move from their building again in Franklin Avenue. Having attended their presentation, I know a traffic survey was undertaken. However, I don't think they understood the amount of traffic that AWE produces, particularly in the late afternoon, or that for local businesses. We get a lot of large lorries, straight delivery vehicles passing through on the A340. There is also the school run to consider. I hope you will take my views into consideration. Thank you. And uh, Shiraz Sheikh is, is going to read out the summary of written submissions in support of the application. Thank you. Thank you. I think in courtesy to the people who submitted it, I, I will read those names out. They are Alec Bray, Alan Follett, Andrew and Sarah Ramsey, Catherine Wilde, Derek Kirkhoff, Elaine, Elaine Walsh, Grace Jones, James Harris, Margaret Lightbody, N. A. Dobson, Philip Channing and Wendy Batterson. Mr. Shiraz, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. All written submissions made by supporters to the application have been provided in full to members to read in advance of this meeting. The following is a summary of the points that have been made in support. The store will provide more jobs and will bring associated economic benefits. It will help to address the monopoly and lack of competition of Sainsbury's in the town. The visual impact objection is not well founded. The area is urbanized in any event by the proximity to the AWE. The proposed landscaping will reduce the harm anyway. Only a small portion of the greenfield site will be taken up as the location plan shows. It is unfortunate that the location of the store is so there, Mr. Shiraz. Uh, could we move the application up so uh, the public can see it as well, please? Thank you. Thank you. It is unfortunate that the location of the store is so close to the administrative boundary. Most Headley residents who will benefit from the store do not live in the West Berkshire district. The, lo the location population with so, sorry, the local population will, ben will benefit from the discount food store. Hadley is an area of relative deprivation. The COVID-19 crisis has brought into focus the benefit of having good local facilities and communities in easy reach of the population. Hadley has grown in recent years and so needs better shopping facilities. Much new housing has been permitted on both sides of the county boundary. The location is sustainable. Shoppers will be able to walk to the store rather than drive. Good for the environment and good for those without cars. The location will assist local health and well-being of residents. It will mean residents will not need to travel further afield to shops in Reading, 
Basin Stoke and Newport. So reducing carbon production and less road congestion further afield. Do not, do not believe that traffic congestion on the A340 will be a problem as these impacts are worse at peak times due to AWD, but local residents will know this and so avoid those times to shop at the store. Site location is effectively part of the town center already now. The store will improve the wider economic vitality and viability of Tagley Town Centre. Cannot understand why the officers are objecting to the application given the significant benefits which will arise, although do note that the recommendation is one of balanced refusal. The site is well served by public transport. We cannot afford to turn this considerable investment down in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. How can AWE public safety issues be important when there's so much housing already around the site? Other premises do not have emergency procedures in place in relation to AWE. In the highly unlikely event of a radiation leak, the risk would be in the form of alpha particulates, which are only an internal hazard if inhaled ingested or injected. Sainsbury's ran out of food during the COVID-19 pandemic, which might happen again, so we should be prepared. The store will provide more choice at lower prices. After the COVID-19 pandemic, many more people will work from home, so traffic during peak times will be lower anyway. Thank you, Mr. Shiraz. We now come on to our last submission, and this is from the applicant, James Mitchell, who is the Regional Head of Properties for Lidl Limited. Good evening, members. As members will be aware, the proposal before you this evening was approved by the Eastern Area Committee in December last year. I have provided the brochure sent to Eastern Area members prior to that meeting, which I trust is helpful as a reminder to East area members and especially the other members of the committee. Since that time, Lidl have continued to work with officers to further enhance the scheme ahead of your determination tonight. In advance of this meeting, I have provided a further brochure summarising those improvements which I hope members have found useful. These changes have enabled the previous reason for the refusal concerning the lack of an acceptable emergency plan to be removed. Our emergency action plan is confirmed as being agreeable with final details secured by condition. As part of this revised plan, we have introduced an emergency only vehicle exit onto Silchester Road to be used in the event of an emergency at AWE, avoiding exiting traffic, obstructing blue light services on all the Marston Road. At the time of the Eastern Area meeting, there was demonstrable large scale support for our application. This has continued to grow since with a further 261 people supporting through Lidl's consultation exercise, taking the total number to 5,531, which is 93.92% in favor. A further 229 personal letters of support have been sent to the council, taking the total to 1,141, or 92.09% in favour. Crucially, only 40 people, 0.68% in Lidl's consultation, and 26, 2.1% in the council consultation, raise objection on the grounds the officer cites as his reasons for refusal. It seems the public believe the benefits of the scheme significantly outweigh the proposed reasons for refusal when judged on balance. In conclusion, these proposals create 40 new jobs recruited locally with potential for career progression, provide much needed choice and competition, will claw back some of the 81 million of expenditure lost to other centres making Tabley more sustainable in its own right, provide a silk contribution in excess of £350,000, 
offer biodiversity benefits with the retention of trees and hedgerows and 38 new trees planted to assist in screening the development. Offer solar panels, provide electric vehicle charging points, are zero carbon and are highly sustainable with 280 tonnes of carbon saved by reduction of car journeys and are supported by many, many thousands of local residents who crave the benefits the scheme will offer. Our scheme has evolved and improved beyond recognition through the course of the application. We trust the planning committee will now weigh the myriad of benefits in the planning balance. I sincerely hope that members will confirm the Eastern Area Committee resolution and grant permission for the scheme, allowing Middles to deliver this new facility for Tadley, which will be in keeping with the exceptional levels of public support. Thanks for taking the time to consider my comments. Thank you. Uh, members, we now move on to our ward member presentation, and uh, I will ask uh, uh, the ward member, Councillor Dominic Bowett, to give his presentation. Uh, Councillor Bowett, you have five minutes, um, and I will give you notification at four uh, with one minute to go, and then if you need it, I'll just give you a reminder with 10 seconds just to conclude. Uh, if you give me some indication when you're ready to go, I'll start the clock. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. I'm, I'm ready to go now. Thank you. You're away. Since Lidl started their public consultation in Tadley, I have received representations both for and against their plans. In general, those in favour come from Tadley itself, while those objecting tend to live further afield. Representations for the plan far outweigh those against um, those against that, almost all of them asked me to support Lidl so that they could have a choice in where they shop for their daily essentials. That split, by the way, roughly, the, of the ones that came to me personally, roughly mirrored um, uh, 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 the split that was spoken about earlier on in the meeting. As things stand, Tadley residents, some of whom are residents of Aldermaston Ward, my ward in West Berkshire, have only one choice of supermarket unless they are able and prepared to travel to Basingstoke, Newbury or Reading if they want to shop at a lower cost. Many want to be able to shop at a retailer where their money will go further without having to spend time and money to get there. Chairman, members, I know that you take into account all aspects of an application and in this case I ask you to listen particularly carefully to the residents I represent and their neighbours when they ask for our support. Most of us are lucky enough to be, a, most of us are lucky enough to be able to exercise our choice of where to shop because of where we live, where we work or how we shop. For many of my residents though, the Tadley supermarket is less of a one-stop shop and more of the only shop. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Bowie. Uh, members, um, it now comes to uh, the point of any questions of uh, Councillor Bowick. Any questions? Uh, hands up, please, on the participation panel. Councillor, I can confirm. I see no hands up. Um, thank you very much for your presentation this evening. Thank you. Members, um, now is the time. Would you like to ask questions of uh, Mr Butler? Uh, Mr. Goddard or Mrs. Um, Richardson. If you'd like to ask a question of the officer, would you please raise your hand under the participation icon? And uh, before asking your question, could you please state uh, to who you would like to put that question? I do have hands up. Councillor Cole, you're first. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, it's one for uh, Mrs. Richardson. Um, thank you. One of the um, comments that were made uh, in the presentation of the uh, supporters was that uh, other premises don't have a detailed, uh, emer don't have a, a, an emergency plan procedure. Uh, can you confirm whether that's correct or not? Uh, what I can say is any applications that have come forward to me that have been permitted um, applications um, and have been requested to have a, an emergency plan do have them if they've gone ahead. And unfortunately, um, Several of these applications, um, and Sainsbury's and others are, um, are, are some of them that have been cited in uh, some of the comments made, um, 
before we're, we're actually built um, or approved, if you like, before um, this uh, um, process that we've had to put in place to protect um, our, the offsite plan and um, the residents. Um, so I can say that um, not all of them do, but we would certainly encourage them, all of them to do. We, we do that on a relatively regular basis. Uh, but if, if it's a thing, if the recent planning application process that we do, if they have got permission, they have also come forward with a satisfactory emergency plan. Thank you. I've got Councillor Macro next, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it's a question, I think, for Mr. De but or two questions actually for Mr. Butler. First of all, uh, I've had in excess of 300 emails uh, on, this, uh, on this application. Am I right in thinking that we should not be taking too, any notice of the volume of emails, but purely of any points raised in them? Um, and the other thing is one of the emails came from the leader of Basingstoke and Dean Council, uh, where she said that if the application had come to her council, it would likely have been approved. And I wondered whether the representations we've had from Basingstoke and Dean have actually have been from officers or whether it's actually been discussed by the planning committee. Thank you. Um, on the first question, Councillor Crowe, you hear me right? Yes, we can hear you. Good. Um, it's quite clear that uh, the volume of representations is not uh, material consideration in terms of pure numbers. Once the issues are raised, so long as they are related to planning issues, is clearly a material consideration. So simply just addressing the balance of the merits of this case from the numbers of support and numbers of projection, uh, it's not a simple yes, no. You need as members to consider the material issues raised in those representations. So numbers is not in one sense, uh, or any sense, a relevant, a relevant factor. On the second point, um, I'm not aware, in fact, as case officer representing this council, I haven't received any formal resolution from a committee from Basic Stoke and Dean Borough saying that they would uh, support this application. Uh, similarly, I've had no actual support uh, or full support from officer level. But in the consultation response at officer level from Basingstoke and Dean Borough, they have simply said they have no objections to the application. Thank you. Um, Councillor Moore, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I was just, I don't know quite who to whom this question is, is addressed. Um, but um, a, a statement was made that the um, population of Tadley um, had grown significantly. Um, does anybody know the figures um, uh, about that uh, and how much uh, that's grown and, and how recently? Who would like to pick that up? Uh, Mr Butler, can you help us? The difficulty being, of course, um, I don't know the details of the Tadley growth because I'm not uh, obviously employed by the Daisy Stoke and Dean Borough. But I am aware that this council has uh, granted a number of relatively new commissions uh, for additional housing in the Alder Marston Ward of Tadley. And I'm also aware of a number of recent appeal decisions, uh, for example, immediately opposite the application site where there has been recent um, additional housing. So whilst I can't put uh, any figures on it, I am aware that housing has fairly fairly substantially increased over Tadley, uh, certainly over the last 10 years, but I don't have any actual figures, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Law. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chairman. It's a question for uh, Mr. Butler or possibly Mr. Dre. Uh, I understand that all retail applications like this are subject to a sequential test. Uh, I didn't see any re reference to a sequential test made in any of the officers' uh, reports. Uh, could you please comment? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, if you look in the main agenda report um, to you, Chairman, which was to the EAPC under 615 retail policies, 
Um, page, please. I'm just checking the page. Uh, if you look at the 616. Paragraph 616. Paragraph 616. You will see that the issues of the sequential test are mentioned there. And in the final um, sentence, uh, it says, I'll read it. Officers are satisfied that the sequential test is met in this proposal. So no retail reason for refusal is recommended. It's a very unusual site, Chairman, because if we were comparing as officers the sequential test in relation to our own settlements in our district, this application would certainly fail, there's no question. However, taking a common sense and pragmatic approach, uh, the nearest settlement is quite clearly Tadley, albeit in a different district. And in terms of the sequential test, it's within 300 metres of the centre of Tadley, we consider. And therefore, it is um, edge of centre. And we did consider, or I did consider as case officer, whether to propose a distinct reason for refusal on that basis. But uh, I'm absolutely certain in advising you that if the application had been refused on that basis, uh, that would have not been a good ground for refusal at appeal. And therefore, in your determination of this application, we consider the sequential test has been clearly satisfied. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Culver. Thank you, Chairman. Um, this is a question for Mr. Butler on point 6.16. Um, it says the site is current, is certainly not allocated for new retail space in the district local plan. I was just wondering where the nearest brownfield sites which might have been allocated for retail space are in relation to this current application? I don't think I can answer that question offhand without doing research, uh, although I can say that the nearest brownfield sites um, in terms of this application would fall actually, I think, within Basel Stoke and Dean Borough, but of course that's obviously outside our planning remit. Chairman, I can add that um, Aldermaston Village is uh, recognised in our policies as a local centre. Um, beyond that, you have Wolverhampton um, and Compton, yeah. But it, within the neighbouring the, the neighboring development plan for Basingstoke and Dean, uh, Tadley does have its own town centre commercial area under their policies, which is similar to what we have in CS11. That helps. Obviously, that's not part of our plan, but it's a relevant consideration. Thank you. Uh, with respect to Councillor Corver's question, I think I read in the um, documentation from Mr. Mitchell uh, from Lidl, who, who said, I think, if there was a, br a brownfield site in the area, they would certainly have considered it over the Greenfield site, if, if that's any help also, but obviously not one in the close vicinity. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Bennyworth. Thank you, Chairman. Um, two questions, if I may. First to uh, Mr Butler. Um, should any weight at all be placed on uh, a very old uh, approval um, for development, um, admittedly not on this exact site, but uh, um, some time ago? Um, just wonder if that carries any weight whatsoever. I apologise, I missed the site in question. Sorry, in, in, the, in the report, in 2.1 uh, 2 planning history, um, it cites uh, an, an approval in 2000. Uh, for construction of an indoor sports hall, outdoor playing fields. Yeah, uh, um, yes, that's actually been implemented uh, to my knowledge. Um, I believe, oh, no, I apologise, it was an outline application, so it was never, never implemented because no reserve matters application was um, submitted. So it's very obviously lapsed because at that time, 2005, it would have lapsed. So effectively, there are no, although it's history is right, there's no extant planning consent for any development on the site. Okay, thank you very much, Chairman. If I may, uh, a question of Mr. Goddard um, concerning uh, the parking. 
Um, is, isn't it the case that the um, the parking requirements were a maximum and that the proposed parking falls within uh, the current guidelines? Chairman, that is correct. Um, uh, unfortunately, our parking standards are, are somewhat outdated and, and do need to be um, updated soon. The one space per 14 square metres for a retail store such as this uh, is a maximum provision. Um, but knowing how popular these stores are, we, we have sought to get the um, parking provision as high as we can get it. Um, so we have as well relied on the data that was submitted that I mentioned earlier. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Bennyworth. Uh, Councillor Pass, please. Uh, Chairman, my, my, my question has been partly asked by Councillor Culver. I appreciate the difficulties of our planning officers um, commenting in detail uh, about neighbouring authorities, but nevertheless, there have been a lot of uh, and, and discussions with the applicants uh, following on from the brownfield sites uh, and knowing Tadley fairly well uh, can we effectively rule out the fact that there are suitable brownfield sites within the town centre of Tadley that could have been suitable uh, to Mr Butler please. Yeah I think I can help on that and thank you Councillor Pask although um, obviously, I'm not very familiar with Tadley. I have familiarised myself with the Reading, what's called the Reading Warehouse uh, site in what could be called the centre of Tadley, which is a parade, I believe, of vacant uh, shop units. Um, considering the normal uh, format of discount retail stores uh, and the lack of parking on that particular site, on-site parking, as far as I'm aware, and indeed it's rather poor location, uh, very close to other residential properties. I can fully understand why, um, if I had been the applicant, which obviously I'm not, that uh, looking at it from the applicant's point of view, that would not be a suitable site in terms of their trading formats. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Barnett, please. I think you need to turn mute off, please, Councillor. Thank right. you. Right. OK, am I clear now, Chairman? Um, clear now. Quest question for um, Mr Goddard. Um, Mr Goddard, um, many people, from my past knowledge, who use uh, Liddell stores are not always... Um, uh, shopping for their weekly shop and therefore several would be expected just for going special for special items probably uh, walking or cycling in your analysis when you were mentioned about extra traffic movements have you taken that into consideration that not everyone will be arriving by a vehicle other than uh, possibly a uh, motorcycle Chairman, yes. Um, uh, all movements to and from the store were considered um, non-motorised and motorised. The figures that we gave you earlier on were all that were left regarding motorised. Um, it is certainly hoped, considering how sustainable this location is, that many locals will visit the store um, by walking or cycling or on the public transport facilities. There is a bus that buses that pass the site uh, every half an hour or so. So there's plenty of means for people to travel to the store um, by no, non-motorised travel. And yes, this was considered. Thank you. Councillor McKinnon. Thanks, Chairman. Uh, just a couple of quick ones to, uh, to, to Michael, please. Um, uh, am, am I right in saying, Michael, that you, you mentioned earlier that the lack of an emergency plan, the lack of the finalised emergency plan, is, is not a valid reason for refusal. I just wonder if you could confirm if you did say that and, and what you meant by that. Um, and, and, and secondly, the A1 retail permission that's being applied for, again, if you could just confirm for me, that's not necessarily discount uh, food stores. It's a, it's a wider class of retail. So just two questions for you there, please. On well, the first question, Councillor McKinnon, um, 
just so I can be absolutely clear, when um, officers took the application to Eastern Air in December last year, we were certainly not satisfied with the quality and integrity of the lockdown plan, plan proposed by the applicant. And therefore, we proposed that, uh, if you recall, on the update sheet, as an additional reason for refusal, had the EAPC ele elected to refuse the application, obviously they didn't. Um, what's been clear to me, and uh, I hope um, Caroline, my colleague, is that uh, through considerable efforts of the applicant, uh, they have now produced um, version nine of the lockdown plan, which may not be absolutely perfect yet, but we consider in advising you, if you elected to approve the application, it is capable of being conditioned. Whereas before we were not satisfied that it could be capable of conditioned uh, at all. And therefore, just to be clear, we are not recommending refusal on that basis. Okay, thanks. On, Thank you. on the second uh, point, I'm glad you raised that because should the committee approve the application tonight, if I can just bring your attention specifically to Appendix 4 in the um, agenda sheet, the proposed conditions. It's page 50, condition 25, uh, range of goods lines. By applying that condition, at no time shall more than 3,500 individual lines of goods be sold. That will automatically mean that the premises will be a discount food store. Because Sainsbury's, for example, or other more general retailers have up to 20,000 lines. Uh, so this condition, which if you approve, we would strongly, very strongly uh, guide you to apply, would mean that a commission would only be occupied by a discount retailer. And as I'm sure you all know, there are not many uh, major discount retailers in the country at the moment. That's very interesting. Thank Thanks for that, Matt. Thank you, uh, Councillor sure. McKinnon. And finally, I've got Councillor Longton. Thank you, Chairman. To Mrs. Richardson, I was asked earlier on this evening to confirm whether or not Sainsbury's have developed a satisfactory off-site emergency plan in relation to the proximity of AWE. Fancy is, um, firstly, it was um, built before um, the, the process that we've got in place um, came into being. Um, so actually, we've not had a, a legal requirement, if you like, from uh, through the planning process to actually uh, put in an emergency plan. They're also actually in basic stock and deans area, um, but we do actively encourage um, through the health and safety at work and through the emergency planning process for all premises to have um, emergency plans. And the recent booklet that we put through um, all the, the doors of people that are, are within the detailed emergency planning zone also has an element in there about businesses about what they should do. Um, it's unfortunate if they don't have it because they do have a, a responsibility to make sure from the health and safety of all those uh, that work and um, shop there to actually uh, make sure that they are safe. Um, and um, we, we constantly, if you like, uh, try and encourage people to do that. So um, I can't say whether they have or they haven't, um, but if they haven't, they should have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Members, I've got no more uh, requests for clarification and questioning. So um, we've now heard the presentations from the officers regarding the planning highways and the emergency issues. Uh, and we've heard, uh, we've heard the um, written representations from the public, both objecting and supporting this application. We've also heard a written, uh, the written case put by Mr. Mitchell, uh, the little regional head of properties. And we've also had an extensive questioning uh, session with our officers. So it's now time to open up the debate. Um, if you'd like to speak, please uh, raise your hand uh, under the icon. And um, who would like to start? Thank you very much. Councillor Pask. Uh, Chairman, thank you. Chairman, may I, I start by giving a little explanation? I'm sure there may well be one or two members of the public those from North Hampshire listening to us this evening. Um, many years ago, no doubt, 
someone drew a line on a map to delineate a parish boundary. Um, to the one side of that line, uh, that subsequently grew into districts or even count, county councils, uh, lay Tadley. The other side of that uh, line lay Newbury, later West Berkshire, and of course Aldermaston Parish. And, and it's literally the fact that there is a line on the map as to why we in West Berkshire are determining an application that seems from the vast number of emails that I have received to affect mostly or be desired mostly by members of, of the public living in or around Tadley, Pamber Heath, Gorkhurst, etc. I'm reasonably well familiar with Tadley and the surrounding area. In fact, I visited it yet again yesterday to uh, confirm the lie of the land, so to speak. But I, I've been a member of West Berkshire and Newbury District Council before it for, for some time. I'm actually very proud that we are a plan-led authority. We do make decisions based on our local district plan. I wish we made decisions based on the level of support or the level of objection, because determining this application would be a no-brainer if everyone wants it. So where I am coming from, Chairman, is looking at our local plan, what I feel we need to be certain of, should we lean towards approving this application, is that for us in West Berkshire, this does not create a precedent. Now this is in Aldermaston. If, if this was just down to Aldermaston and for the public, uh, members of the public living in Aldermaston, I don't think we'd be here discussing this. But the fact is there's Tadley just over that line I described earlier. So I'm casting my mind around West Berkshire. Now 75% of West Berkshire is the area of outstanding natural beauty. So I, I think to put it bluntly, there are a lot of green fields in that area. So I think we can discount those, and I don't think they're the sort of places that Little would be looking for. So therefore, I turn my attention to the more urbanised areas, that is to the east of the district around Tylehurst, Calcutt, Purley, Pangbourne, etc. And of course, to the more central areas of Newbury and Thatcham, and of course, then to the more western areas of Hungerford and, and even potentially Lambourne, but much less so. And I'm wondering if this were to be approved, whether this would create a precedent against our local plan, insofar as there are pretty well in virtually all those uh, areas I described, the brownfield sites, which is why I specifically asked the question about suitable brownfield sites, which is a difficult one to answer because they're in a different administrative area. But knowing the old Reading Warehouse site fairly well over many decades of occasional shopping there, that would not be suitable in my humble opinion. So I look for, and I, members, if I could take your attention to page 27 of our agenda and talking about the sequential tests and so on, uh, and I turn you to uh, paragraph 616, about a third of the way down. It says, basically, town centre uses should be um, directed towards a centre, brackets of the town, then the edge of the centre, brackets within 300 metres, then out of centre, then elsewhere. So this actually, since it goes on about six lines up from the bottom of 616, this is some 200 metres from the centre of Tadley. So in my opinion, that part of it is meets the test, as far as I'm concerned. It is close enough to Tadley. I, I think I'm discounting in my head the, 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 the nuclear arguments. Um, the, yes, it's in the inner safeguard area, but a lot of work, as we have heard, has been undertaken to ensure public safety. And I have to say, all those new houses built in the last five years or so opposite, I'd rather shop in a shop in that zone than live there 24 hours a day. So the real argument, in my opinion, is should we allow this on a green field? Are there sufficient extenuating circumstances, forgive me chairman, I'm trying to find page 31. Um, so on page 31 in the final conclusion, uh, I'm wondering, it says if the application would improve some of the weight that I think we should consider, and I'd love to hear what other members have to say, are what outweighs the balance and the harm of us granting permission on the edge of settlement, on the edge of a green field, adjacent to quite an urbanized edge, 
including banks and other commercial premises and the center of town. What balances that out in my mind is the CO2 reduction of people traveling, of the convenience, of the commercial impact and assistance to people. I don't like using word deprived, but let's we say slightly less well off people who potentially could access this shop. So Chairman, I, I'll, I'll stop there. I, I think on balance, and this is a balance, I'm trying to make a case that I think we could justify accepting this application because I think there are benefits. I don't think, in my humble opinion, it would create a precedent for the rest of West Berkshire. And we are West Berkshire and that is what I feel we should take into account. Forgive me for going on at length, Chairman. It's an important matter. Thank you, Councillor Pass, for uh, laying the foundations for the remainder of the debate. Uh, uh, Councillor Barnett. Sorry, sorry, Chairman, I didn't think I was next. Um, bear with me, um, Chairman and members. I, I've actually written a speech tonight, which might have some bearing on a few other things centred around planning. Firstly, can I say how refreshing it was to receive what some people might have deemed to be clogging up email boxes, but this is democracy we live in, whether we like it or not. I haven't responded to them, and I think several other members haven't, but I personally felt they were personal views, or at least the majority, and not necessarily a source of one individual. Regarding influence on what I'm about to say, it definitely won't influence me. Uh, I'm looking at an application completely different context. This application, whilst outside the settlement boundary, in my view, must be considered in the light of 2020 and the objectives in climate change on the council and the country at large, where encouragement to travel minimum distance to shop must be at the forefront of all of us. Furthermore, the government clearly encourages choice. And in this case, where one supermarket holds the monopoly, or clearly it looks very much that way, in the case of the application in front of us, do we follow the letter of our policy? Members, we are obviously in a predicament, and I am specifically myself. Do we look at local needs, the community benefits, and obviously less long distance travel to get our shopping? Well, members, I have actually been in this predicament before, in the days when I was on West Barks Council some years ago. And I think I'm probably alongside Councillor Longton and Councillor Pask. If I'd have taken the approach in the past, Vodafone headquarters would have never been built. I remember it went through on a majority of one, and I was proud I actually voted for that. It had a great asset for the jobs and obviously the area. Also, following on from that, we had another application outside the settlement boundary, the Falkland Surgery in Wash Common. Again, a great community benefit. And of course, it's also been enhanced by other buildings around it. Relating to this application in hand, exactly the same. Extra local jobs, cutting down carbon emissions, community benefit and offering choice. Therefore, members, in mind, in my case, I've made it. Up, I've made up my mind. I should be voting against officers' recommendations and in support of the application tonight. Thank you, Councillor Barnett. Uh, Councillor Macro. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I must admit I do uh, disagree with Councillor Barnett on that. Um, and uh, as Councillor Pass says, we are a plan-led authority and. Uh, in our plans, it says we should not uh, we should not build outside of settlement boundaries or or in the open countryside. There's also a national policy in part of what's called the national planning policy framework that mm -hmm. says we should value countryside for its own in its own right. Um, and uh, you know sometimes we do say the benefits of a development outweigh that. And in my case, we we approved a school in my in my ward. But a school, a doctor's surgery, perhaps, but not a not a, a, a supermarket. Um, now, I think Councillor Law asked about a sequential test earlier, 
And I did find on the list of documents on the website, there's something called a, a retail and, pl and planning uh, document that did contain a sequential test. Uh, and but uh, I did notice that did not include um, the Reading Warehouse site, which was uh, up for sale at the time. And I did ask about that at the Eastern Area Planning Committee, and I didn't really get a satisfactory answer. So the, they, they didn't put it in there and then dismiss it for any reason. Um, they, they just uh, omitted it entirely. Also in that document where they did uh, an impact study, um, they, they went as far as Newbury and Reading and so on. They didn't go as far as Mortimer. I didn't mention the budget in supermarket in Mortimer, which I think would be quite seriously affected by, uh, by this development if it goes ahead because it's only one and a half miles away. Um, with uh, many of the emails I received, I noticed and I mentioned the fact that of lack of uh, um, uh, lack of competition, lack of um, choice when they came to buying groceries and so on. Uh, and also mentioned the problems that came up with the lockdown during the virus. But one of the effects of that lockdown has been a great increase in online shopping. Uh, so online shopping does actually greatly increase the amount of choice that people do actually have. Uh, and I know that uh, some of the online suppliers do do price matches. So I believe one does price match with Lidl and another one price matches with that supermarket. So um, that should keep prices reasonably low. Um, and the other thing I'm worried about is the, uh, is the issue if it's an emergency at AWE. Uh, we, we have had incidents there in the past. You know, we've had a fire in an explosive store. We've had a, a, a flood. Uh, and at one time, I think the fire service have been called out kind of uh, twice a month. Um, so, you know, it's a real, it is a real issue. Um, the prevailing wind means that if there was a radiation leak made, the, uh, leak made WE, it's, it's most likely to go uh, eastwards and cover Hadley, unfortunately. And uh, I just think, though, if the, this did happen and there was a lockdown lasting between 24 and 48 hours, if there's uh, people locked in a supermarket for that length of time, um, okay, they've got plenty to eat and drink, uh, but... Uh, if they're separated from their loved ones, and I'm thinking perhaps, I'm thinking perhaps of parents and their children, uh, there could be quite uh, quite a, a large amount of distress, uh, so which greatly concerns me. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Councillor Macro. Councillor Law. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'd just like to start, and I think we've all agreed that this is contrary to policy, contrary to West Berkshire's planning policy. Um, and uh, I think we've, you know, we, we've all accepted that. Uh, I'm concerned about that. I'm concerned about a dangerous precedent that it could cause <coughs> in, in other parts of West Berkshire. Uh, I won't repeat, Councillor Pask outlined a number of other potential sites across West Berkshire where the precedent could be, uh, could be implemented. Uh, there's no doubt, if it, because it's against policy, uh, if we're going to approve it, it's got to have exceptional circumstances. And, and I've gone back from Eastern area, I've gone back through all the papers, I've given it a lot of thought. I got to say, I cannot find a, a set of exceptional circumstances which would allow me to, uh, to approve this tonight. Now I understand uh, clearly the weight of opinions on the side of approval, uh, but if you look at uh, all the lobbying we've had, all, all of the, um, the, the written submissions, the vast majority of them argue one point only. They argue the need for a store, the need for another retail outlet in Tadley. And I would think if I lived in Tadley, I'd be saying the same thing. I, I totally accept that. Uh, so I probably agree with that assessment. But I've got a question to ask. Why have it here on this site? We've heard comments about, is there any other Brownfield sites in Tadley? But why not somewhere else in Tadley? I noted in the update sheet, I didn't get the, the name of the person, but I noted on the update sheet, one of the Basingstoke and Dean councillors said if this was cited in his borough, uh, it would be approved. Uh, but what he or she goes on to state very specifically is, but it's very difficult to find a brownfield site in Tadley itself. 
So I asked the question, well, why aren't you looking for a greenfield site in Tadley? I'm not sure that's been asked anywhere. Uh, not in my Balder Maston and not in West Berkshire, please. Now, I have to consider, as I've said, and as Councillor Pask and I think uh, uh, other councillors have spoken, uh, Councillor Barnett, we've got to look at this application and consider its uh, relevance to the, all of the, uh, the residents of, of West Berkshire. And the problem I see it, in fact, is it's not just a precedent that this could happen somewhere else in West Berkshire on the edge of Hungerford or the, the edge of Purley or what have you. Uh, we're actually, as the officers say, we're losing a greenfield site. And I don't think this is just any other greenfield site. If, uh, if I could ask you to look at the uh, location plan on page 59, members, give you time to find that. You'll see this site is absolutely surrounded by other green fields. And those green fields are quite a nice green gap between the built up area of Tadley and the AWE. So I don't think if we were to approve this, we'd be setting a precedent to other sites across West Berkshire. I think this could be a precedent for further incursion into this green field gap in future years. Uh, one or two people have mentioned other examples. Um, I, I think it was the library, or sorry, the doctor's surgery somewhere. And they also, I think it was Councillor Barnett said, and it's been enhanced later on by buildings around it. Mm. Well, that's subjective as whether well, the other buildings around it actually enhance it, you know? Uh, so the, I'm, I'm worried about that. And uh, I'm also conscious that a number of the people who objected, um, all objected about the visual impact and the, it's, the, it's the second reason that the officers are given, impact on the visual amenity, impact on the local landscape, light pollution, noise, etc. So I'm conscious, I'm conscious of, of that from those other objectors. And I've got a final point, Chairman, because uh, I want to address the argument about travel and CO2 reduction in emissions. Uh, <laughs> I, was I read the Silchester Parish Council's uh, objection that they, well, they didn't object actually, but they had a very qualified uh, acceptance. And they're really qualified, they're really concerned, as were Aldermaston in their, sub in their submission. Uh, and, and there are others particularly concerned about the increase in traffic. I think Councillor Macros mentioned, Burfield's not very far away. Silchester were very, very concerned about what they describe as the A3 corridor of development, actually increasing the traffic through Silchester and coming towards that. Uh, now, I, I noticed, I remember it was asked at Eastern Area, um, there was no analysis done of the CO2, the emissions, the net impact one way or other of this. That analysis has not been done. Uh, so whatever your view on that is, it's a subjective view. It's not an objective view. So I'm, con I'm concerned about that. Uh, I'm quite happy, Chairman, to make a proposal to accept officers' recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Law. I have um, Councillor Cole, please. Chairman, I think, I think you should ask for, a, is there a seconder? Well, I'm, I'm happy at the moment for the debate to carry on and see if Councillor Cole comes in with anything as opposed to, That's see if she goes over the debate. We've got a proposer. Councillor Cole. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm afraid I'm going to be repeating what a lot of other members have said, but I think this is a very important um, application and that therefore we should really uh, consider it carefully. Uh, and although I understand and respect the views of the Eastern Area Planning Committee, uh, I disagree with them. And although this is a balanced decision, I'm supporting the officer recommendation for the reasons set out in, in the report. There are a couple of things I want to, uh, points I want to make. Our planning policy CS18 clearly shows our commitment to protecting our green infrastructure. And just because this site is not in a, the highly protected AOMB doesn't mean that this greenfield site is not worthy of protection. I accept that this area is adjacent to the settlement boundary and has dwellings and commercial properties, properties opposite, 
it. But as Councillor Laws just pointed out, it is surrounded by other green fields. The site does lie within the inner protection zone of the a AWE. And although, again, I accept an emergency plan has been revised and improved upon, Lidl is not renowned for its shop floor staffing levels, which causes me concern should there be an event at AWE and the building and site has to be evacuated or residents sheltered. I know it's highly unlikely, but it does have to be considered. And Mr Butler also reminded us that this permission is not a personal one to Lidl. So if this was approved, there's nothing to stop any other retailer from using this site in the future for, other, uh, for different retail purposes. Although I, I accept that there is a condition uh, in the Eastern Area Planning Committee uh, report. I know that since COVID-19 hit us, there are strong economic and environmental benefits to this application. And we have to balance our commitment to our planning policies against our commitment to rebuilding our local economy during this recovery period and beyond. However, in my view, the economic and environmental arguments do not outweigh our planning policies. As other members have stated, we take pride in being a plan-led authority. We must be consistent in our decision-making and applying our policies. Otherwise, there's no point in having a local plan. Planning decisions are not determined by public opinion, but by the knowledge and judgment of our professional planning officers, and in the case of this application, by a committee of highly experienced members who have a very strong understanding of the planning system. Whilst 300 odd supporters have emailed committee members expressing their support for this store, what members have to consider is, can an exceptional need for it be demonstrated which will allow us to deviate from our policies without compromising them. We also have to take into account that we have received some very strong and well-considered objections to this application. So we shouldn't assume that if we approve this application tonight, it will be viewed with unalloyed joy by, the resident, by all of the residents of Tadley. Therefore, Chairman, I'm quite happy to second Councillor Law's proposal to accept officer recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cole. I have one. No, the Councillor Macro, you've you've uh, withdrawn. Am I right? I was going to second the proposal. I thought that might be the case. Thank you, Councillor Macro. Um, members, um, we've had a very thorough discussion uh, on this application this evening, and uh, uh, we're now going to uh, go to the vote. I don't intend to summarise because I think we have. Uh, as a committee, certainly strongly put the case uh, for um, going with the officer's recommendation. And uh, I do have a proposer, uh, Councillor Law, and I do have a seconder uh, to um, uh, support the um, officer's uh, recommendation. Uh, but before I do, um, are we quite... Happy with, there's no conditions, nothing else to worry about, Mr. Shiraz, before this goes to the vote. No, I thought that would be the case. Therefore, members um, with uh, Councillor Law as a proposer and Councillor uh, Cole as the seconder, the recommendation is for the head of planning and countryside uh, be authorised to refuse the planning permission for application number 19 stroke 01063. That's on the land to the south of Ravenswing Farm, Tadley. Uh, for the erection of that class one food store. Uh, Mr. Shape, would you be kind enough, please, to conduct the name vote? Thank you, Chairman. I'll start with Councillor Barnett. Against the motion. Councillor Bennyworth. For the motion. Councillor Cole. For the motion. Councillor For the motion. Councillor uh, uh, Chairman Brooker. All the motion. Councillor Law. For the motion. Thank you. Councillor Longton. Against. Councillor McKinnon. For the motion. Councillor Macro. For the motion. Councillor Moore. For the motion. 
and find it becomes your task. Gladly for. Mr. Shiraz, would you please announce the uh, decision? The motion has been, uh, uh, the application has been refused. Um, uh, the officer recommendation is carried. Thank you very much, members. Uh, therefore, this application uh, is refused. Members, thank you very much for your contribution uh, to the meeting this evening. And uh, I close the meeting at 12 minutes past eight. <laughs>